Welcome to the Tuesday morning devotional. It's good to have this opportunity once again to meet with you and talk about a passage of scripture. Before I do that, just a matter of, I don't know if it's trivial or not. Many years ago, over 20 years ago, I remember distinctly writing a newsletter article about the new phenomenon I was noticing in cars, which is tinted windows, some very tinted. And I wrote the article saying that I was very conscious because I wave at people and I notice people. And I remember very distinctly feeling concerned that I would pass a car, they'd come up by me and I couldn't see them, but they could see me. And maybe they didn't realize how strong their windows are tinted. And I didn't wave, you know, it's kind of that being a pastor, I want to be, make sure you are friendly. Now fast forward, I realized the other day at HEB and I, wherever I go, but somebody spoke to me and I just stood there. I had to say, who are you? I don't know how I said it, but basically, because it, the voice sounded familiar. It wasn't a church member, but it was someone I've worked with at the hospital. The voice sounded familiar, but I just couldn't tell. Then I started realizing that sometimes you can really tell. I know that's who that is. Sometimes you cannot. Anyway, for what it's worth, I just wanted to bring up, now there's a new challenge of, is, am I going to walk by someone and they go tell their family, Brother Mike didn't speak to them or whatever. I know that sounds paranoid, but I guess that comes with the territory of being a pastor. But it's also just making an observation that all of us face. Can we identify people when they have a mask on? I want to go back to Philippians, because the other day I was talking about one thing in a passage, and I noticed something I wanted to come back to and discuss. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Just through verse 15. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you, both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. Now, there's a lot packed in those few verses. The topic I want to address is the ongoing present tense work of God in a believer's life as opposed to the thought that we might have that once a person trusts Jesus for their salvation, once a person calls on the name of the Lord to be saved, it's done and they just go about their business. So I want to talk about the ongoing so there's a, in verse 12, very quickly, Paul says, while I was there with you, you obeyed the gospel. You were growing. Now, much more in my absence. I want to highlight the words, much more. That obviously implies, clearly, growth, more, productivity, advance, progress, much more in my absence. So I just want to, on those two words, remind you that 
there should be growth in our lives. The next phrase is, work out your own salvation. Now that is a phrase that for Baptists and other Christians who hold, excuse me, hold strongly to eternal security or perseverance of the saints. Baptists teach that when someone is, listen closely, genuinely saved, then they are eternally secure. Of course, there are people in our lives that claim to be Christian and they just show no evidence at all. In fact, they show evidence of otherwise. And that then bring, then people want to bring the argument against eternal security. Totally understand it. When you look at people and their confession as proof. So this passage, so what Baptists don't teach, we don't teach that you work for salvation. We don't teach that you earn salvation. And one of the things I've learned in my life as a pastor, preacher, apparently in our DNA, even people that want to be right with God, there's something in our DNA where we want to earn it, secure it with our own efforts. Not because we think we're good enough, we just have that work ethic and we want to earn it and deserve it. Well, Baptists and others, many, many others, teach you don't earn salvation. You don't work for it. But here's this phrase, and but look at the phrase. Work out. Work out your own salvation. Someone could look at that real quickly and say, there it is. We have to work for our salvation. No, it says work out. So there's something in you, and that would be salvation. Faith. Trusting Jesus. A secure position in Jesus. That is to be worked out. Now, if this was a normal year, I'd tell you the NFL is about to have regular uh, camp for the new season. And at that camp, very, very talented, athletically almost perfect men are going to be worked almost to death by coaches that are going to scream in their face about the technique they need to master. So they're going to have these six foot eight, 320 pound linemen being screamed at that they're not doing good. And they're going to be worked on. I mean, they're going to be challenged to take their craft, their athletic ability, their skill through junior high, high school and college, natural giftedness, and that coach is going to tell them and try to work out that tremendous talent. Work it out. I, they want to see this talent go to another level. Simple as that. They don't take unqualified unathletic men and make them NFL players. They take super qualified, athletically gifted men and make them something. So, my salvation, I'm eternally secure in Jesus, but my, all of my life I've been working out my spiritual life, working out my own salvation with fear and trembling. Verse 13, for it is God who works in you. When I got saved, and of course we know the Holy Spirit comes into our life, but when I got saved, 
God began to work in me. Now, it just so happens the way God is, who God is. He doesn't force things. He doesn't, and he doesn't work quickly. No, most of the time. He can work very quickly if he wants to, but he works in us at a pace that we can live with and aspire to and do. It is God, verse 13, who works in you. God is working in me, and the Apostle Paul, by the direction of the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> is saying, work out, put it into play, put it into practice, let it come out of you, what God is doing in you. It says in verse 13, it is God who works in you, both to will and to do his good pleasure. Verse 15 that you may become blameless. I just want to look at these three words, four words, that you may become. It's an interesting reality once you get it. When a person trusts Jesus as Savior from the, from the aspect of the wonderful grace at the cross, the work that Jesus accomplished that you couldn't. When a person comes to know Christ, he is then born again, a new creature, a new creature, and when he dies, he's going to heaven. In the meantime, there's a purpose on earth, and that is to serve God, and that is to become what he wants us to become. And it is a lifelong journey. It's not a seminar that you go to and you come out and you got it. It's lifelong. Because that's, it's a, of course, it's, a, it's an eternity. My relationship with Jesus is in real time right now. But it's really eternal. And the day that I die, I just move into another span of time actually outside of time, into the real, eternal, non-time space. And so, this is an eternal work in me. And on this side of heaven, it's slow. It takes a lot of trials and tribulations and good sermons, good Bible studies, good prayer times good words spoken to me by trusted people. All those things work in me to, to work out my salvation. So I hope that you understand the two aspects of salvation. Coming to know Christ and being eternally secure as a child of the Father, the King. And then this call to be a disciple of Jesus, lifelong, never stops, eternal, springing up in you because of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this reality of salvation, of eternal security and salvation, and then salvation that's lived out daily. Sometimes we don't do well, sometimes we do. Thank you for your amazing grace that equips us to work out that salvation because you, according to Philippians 2, 15, are doing a work in us. Thank you for that. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.